Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at converting fractions, decimals and percentages. So, let's get started. So, with the first couple we've got here, these are ones that you should just know off the top of your head. So, for example, we've got 50% here. Hopefully you should know that is 0 0.5 or 0 0.50. Okay, probably 0 0.5 would be the better one to use there, but I've deliberately done that for um, a step in a minute. And obviously 50% as a fraction, you should know is a half. Same with 0 0.25, or should know that's 25%. And of course, that would be as a fraction, one quarter. 20% is one that people tend not to remember, but is always a good one to remember. So that would be 0 0.2 or 0 0.20, but again, 0 0.2 would be the better one there, and that's actually one-fifth. Okay, that does come up quite often, definitely one to uh, memorise for the future. Okay, so let's have a look at some other ones that we might not know. So let's have a look at 24% here then. So you may already have spotted the pattern between decimals and percentages. To go from a percentage to a decimal, we divide by 100. And to go from a decimal to a percentage, we times by 100. So I'm just going to write that there. So to go from a decimal to a percentage, we times by 100. And to go the other way, to go from a percentage to a decimal, we divide by 100. OK? So all I'm going to do here, 24%, I'm going to divide it by 100. So that's 0 0.24. And it's as easy as that. To put it as a fraction, it's still pretty easy, but just ever so slightly different. Percentage is always out of 100. The maximum you can have is 100%. It's always out of 100. So to convert a percentage to a fraction, whatever the percentage is, in this case it's 24, just stick it over 100 because it's 24% out of 100%. Once you've done that, obviously you can tidy it up and simplify it. So I'm going to half both of them to give me 12 over 50. And of course I can um, half them both again to get 6 over 25. But essentially you just simplify that fraction if you can. And it's as simple as that. So let's have a look at 6% then. Exactly the same strategy. I'm going to divide it by 100 to put it as a decimal. Be careful. The most common mistake when you have something like this is to put 0 0.6. That's going to be 60%, not 6%. So just make sure whenever you're doing this, you do divide it by 100 to get 0 0.06 and not just divide it by 10. So a little bit of a heads up there. That's a very common mistake. And of course, it's 6%, so I'm going to go 6 and stick it straight out of 100, because it's 6% out of 100%. And again, simplify the fraction, it is going to be 3 over 50, and I can't simplify it any further. This one here, 0 0.03, I wouldn't go straight to a fraction, it's a bit tricky. What I would do is I'd convert it to a percentage first, and then convert it to a fraction. Okay, so if you have a decimal and you need to get it to a fraction, Put it to a percentage first and then do that step. So again, to go from a decimal to a percentage, I times by 100. So basically times by 10 and times by 10 again. So I'm going to have 3%. And then I'm just going to stick that percentage, which is 3 over 100. So 3 over 100. I can't simplify that. So it's done. It's 3 over 100. Okay, so that's the easy ones, going from a decimal to a percentage and then from a percentage to a fraction, they're the easy ones. It gets a little bit trickier now when we have fractions and we need to go the other way. So I'm going to show you a couple of different methods. First one, this one here, is 13 over 20. And just like we did here, if we can get the denominator to be 100, whatever's on top must be the percentage. So... If I stick the denominator there as 100, how do I go from 20 to 100? Well, I just times by 5, and it's an equivalent. You need to make it an equivalent fraction. So if I times the bottom by 5, you must times the top by 5. 13 times 5 is 65. In which case, as these fractions are equivalent, they're the same, and my denominator is now 100, whatever's on top, in this case it's 65, 
must be the percentage. So we say that 65%. Once you know the percentage, we can just divide it by 100 and say that's 0 0.65 and you're done. Okay, so that's one strategy. If you can get the denominator to be 100, just do that. It's nice and easy. Whatever's on top is the percentage. For something like this, it's not as simple as getting, what do I do to 8 to get it to 100? There are a few different ways you can do it, but that's not very easy. So another method that you could do is times both of them by 100 to have 800 over 500, sorry, 500 over 800. And then what you can do, I'll just come over here, is again, try and get the denominator, the 800, to be 100. And if you just take it step by step, if you half it once, you have 250 over 400. Half it again, you have 125 over 200. And then you can half it again, which is going to give you 62.5 uh, over 100. Which therefore, because that's over 100, we know the percentage will be 62.5%. And I can divide that by 100 to get 0 0.625 as a decimal. Okay, so that's another strategy that you could do when you can't go straight to 100. You can times them both by 100 and then try and get it uh, the denominator to be 100 by dividing or simplifying that fraction. So it's just another way around of doing it. And I've got another way I'm going to do here. But I'm just going to briefly talk about what happens if you have a whole number like this. So if I have 1.31, convert it to a percentage, exactly the same thing, times it by 100, so that's 131%. And again, once it as a fraction, not a problem, just stick the 131 over 100. But of course, that does mean that you have a top-heavy fraction. So what you might want to do, in fact, I recommend doing this, is to convert it back to a mixed number. So how many hundreds go into 131? Well, that's easy. It goes in once. What's left over? 31 over 100. And, of course, if you can simplify that fraction, simplify that fraction. In this case, we can't because 31 is a prime number. Okay, so that's the way you can do it if you have a whole number. Of course, if that was 2.31, that would be 231%. So that would be 231 over 100. How many times does 100 go into it? It would be 2, and so on and so forth. Essentially, you might have already spotted this, if you have one whole number, you should have a whole one here. If this is a 2, that whole one there should be a 2. If this was a 7, that should be a 7, because that's just how many whole ones do you have, and this is how many whole ones you have as well. So those should match. What if you have something here? Well, again, we have three whole ones, so I am automatically know that's going to be a 3. And then I've got three quarters. We should know what three quarters is, but let's just assume we didn't, or this was a trickier fraction. Let's convert it to a top heavy. So I need to do, um, oh no, first of all, we need to get the denominator to be out of 100, don't we? So three quarters, denominator needs to be 100. What do I times four by? We times it by 25. So three times 25 is 75. So we have three whole ones and then 75 over 100 as the fraction. Now we can convert it to a top heavy. So 3 times 100 is 300, add the 75. So we have 375 over 100. If you're unsure of what I did there, check out my video on uh, improper fractions to mix numbers and I'll, it just shows you how to convert them. Okay, so we have 375 over 100 which means this is going to be 375%, and I can divide that by 100 to have 3.75. Bit of an easy one, because we should know what 3 quarters is, um, but again, that's just the method you would use um, to convert into a decimal and a percentage. And again, like I said, 3.75, so 3 whole ones, we knew that was going to be the case, because we had 3 whole ones here, 3 quarters we knew was 0.75, so that's why we have the 0.75 here. So you can check that one nice and easy. And like I said, this one here, 3 over 7. So if we're trying to convert 
from a fraction to a percentage, we can try and get the denominator to be 100 by going straight to it, or we can go above it and then start dividing to try and do it like we did here. However, you might have something like this, which is really hard to do. You can't go from 7 to 100. Even if you times them by 100, getting it back down to 100 is really tricky. So the only thing you can do in this case is to actually do the calculation. And what I mean by that is a fraction, all it means is 3 divided by 7. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a bus stop and do that. So I'm dividing by 7, so that's going to go on the outside. And then obviously it's 3 That's be, uh, three divided by 7. So I'm, I know I'm going to have a decimal point, so I'm going to put my decimal point in. And I'm going to put some zeros in, ready for my calculation. And it is just a simple bus stop. How many 7s go into 3? Well, none. There's my decimal point. What's left over? Well, I had 3, so I've still got 3. How many 7s go into 30? Well, 4 times 7 is 28, which leaves me with 2 left over. How many 7s go into 20? Well, 2 times 7 is 14, which leaves me with 6 left over. How many 7s go into 60? Well, 8 times 7 is 56, which leaves me with 4 left over. How many 7s go into 40? Well, 5 times 7 is 35, which leaves me with 5 left over. How many 7s go into 50? Well, 7 times 7 is 49, which leaves me with 1 left over. How many 7s go into 10? 1 with 3 left over. Someone's got an extra zero there. And you'll notice it's going to be a recurring decimal. So actually, this is 0 0.4285. Seven, one, and that's recurring. Okay, very, very unlikely to occur in an exam, but that would be how you would do it. If it did occur, it, it wouldn't probably ask you this, it would probably ask you to round it to say three decimal places, in which case we go one, two, three, and then we'd round it to three decimal places, which would be 0 0.429 in this case. And of course, then you just times it by 100 to get that to be 42.9%, but of course that would have been rounded. Okay, so a very quick recap. To go from a decimal to a percentage, we times by 100. To go from a percentage to a decimal, we divide by 100. If you have a decimal or a percentage, get it into the percentage, stick it over 100, and just simplify the fraction. If you have a fraction, if you can get the denominator to be 100, brilliant, do it, because then the numerator, this top number here, will always be the percentage. If it's not exactly nice, times it by 100 and try and go backwards to get the denominator to be 100 by simplifying the fraction. And if all else fails, just use the bus stop and do the calculation 3 over 7 or whatever the old fraction may be, numerator divided by denominator. If you have whole numbers, just bear in mind it won't be zero point, it'll be whatever the whole number is. And if you remember those steps, guys, you shouldn't have any issues with converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.